Hi pal, today I'd like to talk about a fundamental building block of modular, the humble sample and hold module. So in this video, we're going to talk about what a sample and hold module is, and I'd like to show you a simple and uncommon use for it if you're into performing live music. Special shout out to Rob Reeves for loaning me his dub for A148 after I destroyed mine. So what is a sample and hold module? A sample and hold module is a bit like a freeze gun. It works like this. You feed it a signal, and that could be literally any signal at all. It could be control voltage moving slowly up and down like the output of an LFO, or it could be audio like a drum loop or a recording of a dog saying I love you. And right when you tell it to, at that very instant, you can tell the module to sample the input signal and hold it at that exact level until you tell it to sample again. So you're feeding it a signal which is likely to be jumping around up and down and being all crazy. But when you send it a gate, it freezes and holds at a level until you tell it to again. So you might have it in your mind that sample and hold generator means random voltage generator. And that can be true, but that particular meaning, meaning a random voltage generator, is born out of one specific way of using a sample and hold module, which I'll show you in a bit. But a truly modular sample and hold module, like this one, means that anything can be sampled and at any rate and that can make it more useful sample and hold modules are not just modules that make the sound of how computers think okay rob time to patch a bad mother hubbard in ta-da welcome to my modular dual sample and hold how do we use it to make that kind of classic interpretation of sample and hold that we would know from the fixed architecture since of the yester 90s well as i said we can input anything that we like to be the sampled source, and that includes white noise. And because white noise is a signal that jumps around randomly, whenever you send a gate and tell the module to sample white noise, it's going to sample a random level, because all it has to grab is a totally random source. And do this fast now, and you get the computer voice. Let's try it. So obviously your sample and hold module may vary, but on the dup for a 148 it's two copies, it's two blocks of sample and hold. And on a sample and hold module you have sample in, this is where we put the signal that we want it to sample, and that could be audio rate or CV. There's a trigger input, that's where we put a gate of some kind or a signal that when it's high will tell the module to sample the sample input and then we have an output and this is the held voltage. So let's do the computer voice. So I'm going to take the Dixie 2 oscillator by IntelliGel, feed it into my mixer and it sounds like this. Ooh. And then I'm going to feed the sample and hold output to the FM input of the oscillator. Let me just quiet that for a sec. And then as a trigger, I'm going to use the output of this Rainmaker's clock source. You can see it flashing here. That's telling you every time it's making a clock. So this is the clock output. And I will go into the trigger input. So if I turn this on, 
we don't hear anything. So then we need to feed white noise into the sample input. But I don't have a white noise source, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the cable. I feel strangely connected. Add some reverb. Add some Rainmaker. Oh yeah. I love that. Go faster. Good times, right? So, it's using my kind of capacitance as a weird jiggly source. And every time a clock comes from Rainmaker, it samples the jiggle and it holds it at the level there and sends it into the oscillator. Pretty simple. Now, I've kind of said this before, but I think total, total, total randomness is kind of not as exciting musically. But what this is very good for is for modulating parameters. So, for example, you could be using this to control the length of a gate, the release time of a gate. Or you could be using it very slightly to control the brightness of a filter. So you're adding kind of automation vibe to a patch without you having to constantly twiddle a knob to keep the thing sounding alive. Just because total full-scale pitch randomness isn't as fun. Of course, if you then ran this through a quantizer, then it would constrain to a scale. Yeah, that's kind of sampling white noise. So far, so pedestrian. But like I said, we can sample anything. So what if we sampled a more regular source, like a slow saw wave? Let's try it, mate. So here I've got a pip slope, the ALM pip slope, feeding into the sample input. So it's going to sample an LFO. And then again, I've got the Rainmaker as the trigger source, and we're going to hear the Dixie. What does that sound like? <laughs> Very Louis and Bebe Baron. Because, of course, we're feeding it not a random source, but a ramp. So it's sampling the ramp. A little bit like a quantizer, but not tuned to a musical scale. There you go. And if you set up a relationship between the ramp and the clock that's feeding it, so that they kind of phase with each other, you start to get something more rhythmic. Something that's more like, you know, a quantized scale, but it's not quantized. That makes sense. It starts to sound a little bit more repeated and deliberate. Okay, very quickly, we've been talking about sample and hold modules, but there's this other thing called track and hold. What the heck is that? Well, track and hold is similar but slightly different, and actually there's one built into this module. So the, the second generation of the dirt 4 a 148 has a track and hold module as its bottom section. You can actually change either section to be track and hold, depending on a jumper. And all a track and hold does that's different to a sample and hold is that when the gate is high, it allows the signal to come through fully until the gate goes low and then it holds. Does that make sense? So instead of going high and holding a voltage, it goes high and allows the voltage through fully and then holds when it's closed. It sounds a little bit different, so let's just try it. I've got it widened to the bottom section here. <laughs> So when this is high, we get the full pit slope coming through the cow. Sounds like RDD2. 
One of the things I mentioned earlier is that you can put anything into the sample and hold or track and hold module, and that includes audio rate stuff. So you might wonder, what happens if you put actual audio in, like a synth or a drum loop, and then sample and hold it? What the heck does that sound like? Well, let's try it. So here I've got the plats. Making a little platzy metropolis melody using chord mode. But what if I sample and hold this? So what I'll do is I'll take the output of plats, feed it to the sample input. I'm going to take the sample and hold output, that is the sample and held it version of it. I'm going to put it back into the mixer where the plats was. I don't hear anything because I need to send it a trigger. So if I send it a trigger, nothing much is going to happen. I get clicks. So I need to do this at audio rate. To use it, I'm going to use an audio rate oscillator. So I'll take the square output of the Dixie and use that to sample it at high speed. What happens then? What the heck? Somehow, by the magic of analogness, this turns into a bit crusher. Physicists, please tell me why this works, but it does. Yeah, mate. It even does that I, I thing that bit crushes do when you feed them resonant filters. Yeah. And then if I want to modulate this effect, then I just modulate the oscillator itself. So I'll feed it the pip slope, good old pip slope. Why not, right? Okay, so how can a sample and hold module help us play live? Well, all right, so if you've been following along with the Hyaj series of videos which discuss the ever-evolving iterations of my live case, and this is the current evolution of it, you will know the kind of intrinsic thing that I'm doing, which is that I um, trigger the voices in my system with a sequencer to control a pitch and a gate to turn the voice on and off on a second by second basis or turn it on. But those sequences and those gates are derived from different modules in most cases. And so um, they're kind of independent. And by changing one, I get a change in the overall pattern. Um, let me show you what I mean. So here is a bass line, which is being um, sequenced by the metropolis. But the thing that's actually triggering the gate is the abstract data event boss. And actually it's really cool if I use an offset from another abstract data module, the AD50, 60 even. I can control that pattern. So the pitch information is coming from the metropolis, but the gate information is coming from a different module. But they work together really well. But if I go sparse, picks out the notes at different times. It's actually a three-note pattern. Um, well, it's more than a three-note pattern. It's, it's three different pitches that are um, playing over time. So that is the plats. And the plats is receiving the same pitch information, but being gated by this module, the Lattic S180.
So, that's pretty cool. Two voices being triggered by the same sequencer, and because they're being triggered at different times, then you hear different notes. It's kind of like a really lo-fi sample and hold in a way, because by playing the gate, I allow you to hear that voice just for that split second. Here's the problem. If I extend the gate length of the plat, then it's tracking the pitch changes to that. It's just relentlessly following the pitch. What it's not doing is it's not holding at the pitch when I send it to gate. Yes, it's gating, but the only way that I stop it from playing out the whole thing is by shortening the note. What if I want a long sustain held at that pitch until I trigger again? Well, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to figure out. We can use a sample and hold module to fix this trilling problem. So let's do that. Et voila. So what I've done is I've taken the one volt per octave output of my sequencer, the Metropolis, fed it into the sample input, then I've molted the signal that triggers the plats to go into the sample hold module so that at the same time it triggers the note to be played live, it also samples and holds the pitch it's at and then sends it to the oscillator. So despite our sequencer jumping up and down, like this, Platts maintains the pitch of the moment it was triggered. So that the other element, this bass, can move underneath it while it's held at the same pitch. And interestingly, no slouch, we've got a dual. I'm actually doing the same thing with the bass. So we can have long held notes that don't trill. Now don't feel bad because I actually quite like the trills. I always thought of them a bit like a kind of bent note in guitar, you know, like a guitar slide. But it's really interesting to try this. This is something I wanted to do for ages, and it was the reason I bought a sample the whole module. Um, red stripe down, by the way, folks. Red stripe down. If you don't do red stripe down, it breaks. And you get to keep both halves. Because it's much better when things don't just jump around willy-nilly. A little bit of random does, but not too much. It is very controlled. Oh, <laughs> oh,
<laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's a lot more controlled. So shout out to all of you out there who commented to suggest this patch because you are absolutely damn right. And by the way, one other really cool concept that this lets me sort of realize is something I've been wanting to do for ages. And actually the original reason I was looking at the sample and hold was to do pads. Well. Long, long, long parts, at least longer parts than what I've been making, but built using the same pitch information. So by slowing my clock divider down, it's not super slow, but I get slower into that territory. So I can start to make Lego World tunes. just about brings us to the end of our sample and hold adventure. Thank you for your fine attention. If you like subscribing and supporting awesome things, please consider getting on board the good ship Patreon. Buy some of my music on Bandcamp and subscribe to this Mother Hubbard and YouTube channel. Thanks y'all. <laughs>